Packers. They won their fifth in a row there today. We'll talk about it next on Packer Time. Neighbors, oh, it's Packer Time. You can't touch this. It's Packer, Packer Time. You can't touch this. Packer, Packer, Packer. Packer. You can't touch this. Packer, Packer, Packer Time. Break it down. So, how are you? And welcome to Packer Time. And I'll tell you what. Since the Packers have won three in a row, I want you to go to Major Goolsby's tomorrow and have a free hot dog. It's a Goolsby's tradition. They give away 10,000 free hot dogs. It starts tomorrow at 11 and lasts until they run out. And doggone it if the pack isn't red hot these days. They're on defense. First play we'll show you. 50 Holland was supposed to cover 40 Anderson, but he didn't. And Anderson dropped a sure touchdown pass in the end zone. Big break for the Packers. Now, on the next play, third and ten, Testaverde passed to Anderson. Anderson tried to make something happen. Anderson hit, fumble the ball. Tony Bennett recovered. Bucks turned it over twice today. That's one of the problems in the six-game losing streak, turnovers. Now, here's the third play of the second quarter. Anthony, you can call me the wizard. Dillwig runs out of the pocket. Dillwig looking, looking, finds 86 at West to the 20, 15, 10, 5. He fumbled the ball. Now, the ball went out of bounds in the end zone. I'm like you, I'm saying Packer ball where he fumbled, but the correct call is touchback. Tampa ball at the two because the ball went out of bounds in the end zone. Still no score, but no problem. There is the next time the Packers have the ball. You can't see the left of your screen, but Kemp and Sharp crisscrossed. That was a pick. That's illegal, but hey, the Packers scored, and who cares, right? Uh, they led 7-3 at halftime. Sharp with four more catches today. Now here's the second play of the second half. 33, Reggie Cobb hit. Fumble the ball, it's recovered by 54 for the Packers. Scott Steven, the Packers held Tampa Bay to 61 yards rushing. That was Tampa's second turnover, and this time it hurt because three plays later, Anthony Dillwig will fake left, roll right. Come on, Anthony, hurry up, will you? All right, there he is under center, fake left, roll right. He could have run it in, but instead he passed to a wide open, Michael Haddix. Dillwig had two touchdown passes today, has seven for the season, and then with the score, 17-3, Packers in the third quarter. Watch 84, Bruce Hill between Stephen Murphy and Bennett. He catches the TD pass, Testaverde through for 261 yards against the Packer defense. That is sixth worst in the NFL against the Packers. Our last highlight is the rookie, 39, Daryl Thompson, the rookie from Minnesota. His longest run of the season, the longest run by a Packer this season, 37 yards. Packers ran for 144 yards today and won the game. 20 to 10, and how sweet it is. Now, the Bucks hadn't won since they beat the Pack in Tampa October 14th. They had lost five in a row. They're a team in disarray. But Tom Pippins reports the Pack got their wake-up call last week in Phoenix. If they want to make the playoffs, they can't afford to take losing teams lightly. Andy, the Packers didn't play a great football game. On the other hand, they didn't really need to to win. More important, they didn't do anything to beat themselves. I think that's what it's going to take for this team to do well. Um, don't turn the ball over. Uh, I think we had one. Um, and just go play Lindy and Fonty football. Uh, we put uh, probably four or five good football games together now. And uh, it, it's an important time for us. Uh, we played well through the month of November. And now is a big push right here in the month of December. On the other hand, the opponent wasn't the 49ers or the surging Vikings. We're talking about the reeling Buccaneers, losers of six straight games. We didn't deserve to win anything today. We didn't play well enough. We didn't play good enough defense to, to beat uh, the number one rated high school in the state of Florida, Wisconsin. But give the Packers their due. They played a solid game on both sides of the ball, and they took advantage of some excellent field position created by Tampa Bay turnovers. Their third straight win was as sweet as ever. It's good to see this football team starting to come together a little bit. We've got a long way to go yet. Some real tough teams to have to play yet, and uh, it, it's good to be above 500 right now. I'm Tom Pippins on Packer Time. Well, I think they could have beaten the high school teams, huh? But early in the season, when the Bucks were 4-2 and two and an alleged playoff team, many people said it was because of the improved play of quarterback Vinny Testaverde. But since then, the Bucks had lost six in a row, Testaverde benched. The truth is that since coming out of the University of Miami with the Heisman Trophy in 86, he has struggled, and Tim Van Voren says so have the Bucks. Vinny Testaverde was up and down today. He was up due to 25 out of 49 passing with no interceptions and a TD. But he was down due to a short, unimaginative game plan, lots of pressure, and of course, a loss. Testaverde's been an enigma his whole career. He was even benched for two games this season before returning to start today. I don't like it that way. Uh, 
But uh, Coach Perkins does run the team, and he's going to say who's playing and who's not. Uh, so when I'm playing, I just have to be prepared to win the game. That's all I can do. Well, I, I don't know whether you're going to ever stop Vinny Festival. I think you used the proper term and contain. I think you did a good job of keeping them back there and making them throw the football. When Testaverde was ranked number one in the NFL in passing, the Buccaneers were three and one. He stumbled, so have they. Quite simply, the team goes as Vinny goes. Individually, how would you rate your performance today? Well, it wasn't good enough to win the game, so. The Bucs haven't won in six weeks, so Vinny Testaverde is mostly down. Tim Van Voren on Packer time. All right, so being six and five and in great position for a playoff spot, great news for Packer fans. But who do you think should be the quarterback? Tom Pippins wants to know if the job should go back to Magic or do you ride the hot hand of Dillwig for a while? Andy, let's have a little fun and start another one of those quarterback controversies. I say that Anthony Dillwig should be the starter next Sunday night at Minnesota, even if Mikowski's healthy enough to play. Hey, over the past couple of weeks, Dillwig has proven that he is capable of getting the job done in the National Football League as a starter. Besides, why risk damaging the tender shoulder of Mikowski when he can buy a little time and be ready down the stretch? On the other hand, if Dillwig should struggle against Minnesota, and Fonny should get him out of there in a hurry and have magic. But for now, Dillwig deserves the chance. And that's a wrap from County Stadium. All right, Pip, something to think about. Now, the Packers have a big one next Sunday night in Minnesota against the Vikings, who have won four in a row. We're going to tell you how the Vikings spoil the Bears weekend and how there is nobody perfect in the NFL anymore when we Before can. Dillwig could pick a running mate, Testaverde picked apart the Packer defense on a 76-yard drive just before the half to cut the lead to 7-3. But the Buccaneers were set on self-destruct today. Second play of the second half, Reggie Cobb fumbles. Scott Steven recovers for the Pack. Once again, great field position. Dillwig's eyes must have been like saucers as Michael Haddock's is wide open for the two-yard touchdown. Green Bay leads it 14-3. I'm just kind of an altruistic guy. I just want to make sure someone got a touchdown catch because I could have run it. That's what Lindy wanted me to do, I think. The ball slipped in my hand a little bit, and I, I got to admit, I did feel kind of uncoordinated. I was just trying to get the ball. He's sitting right in front of me wide open, and I just threw it to him. The Dillwig bootleg had the Buccaneers leaning the wrong way all day. Once again, he finds Ed West. This 46-yarder sets up a Chris Jackie field goal and a 17-3 Packer lead. Testaverde puts together another nice drive. Over the middle to Ron Hall, the Bucks down to the Packer 11-yard line. The next play, he has them in the end zone. Bruce Hill on the receiving end, and the Packers lead cut to a touchdown, 17-10. Green Bay goes right to the ground and tries to chew up the clock. Darrell Thompson chews up some big yards, a rare sight of Packer running back in the open field. 37 yards and another Packer field goal, 20 to 10 Green Bay. I guess that's why, you know, that's why I'm here. They drafted me and I, hopefully they got me to do things like that, you know, and among other things too, but I think that's just, uh, hopefully that's just the start. When we've had to run, we've ran the ball, just like we did against the Raiders. We had to read up that time, so that's encouraging for us, but, you know, a lot of credit goes to the backs too because they see the holes real well and they're making great cutbacks. With around four minutes to play, Lindy Infante decides to go for it on fourth and one at the Buccaneer 26. Thompson is stopped for no gain. The Tampa Bay wouldn't give the scoreboard operator any more work today. Testaverde gets sacked by Sean Patterson, and the Packers win their third in a row. A pleasant roll reversal for the Packers this time. The Packers making the big plays, the Buccaneers making the big mistakes. And finally, Lindy and Fani gets use out of his running game. I don't know how many yards we had, but that's immaterial in this offense. I keep saying that week in and week out. Um, the important thing was we ran the ball when we needed to, and we made some first downs late in the game, moved the chains, and, and complemented the passing game pretty good with the run game, I thought. It seems like we're always snake-bitten against Tampa Bay. I mean, we go in there, and, and we were one and uh, four against them, and it seemed like three of those games, they won by a touchdown in the last second. So it was always a situation where we always played hard. We never came in with a win. This this time, I think we came in and played a better mental game. I wouldn't say a payback, maybe, but uh, it's definitely a plus for us that uh, we did win this football game last year that, you know, we opened with them and that was a loss for us and it might have been the game that kept us out of the playoffs. It was a game that we had to win and that we're supposed to win. Uh, it wasn't pretty, but it's still in the W column. This is a 10. <laughs> Every win would be a 10. Every week, this is a big victory for us. If we'd, uh, uh, if we had a loss this football game, the, the, uh, it would have been much, much tougher on us. The Packers had the home crowd thinking playoffs today, but next week they face a reborn Minnesota Viking team under the dome. Kevin Hunt, News Channel 4 Sports. Yeah, once left for dead, the Vikings have won four straight to get back in the playoff race today. They whipped the Bears at the Metrodome. And